Hello, everybody. Welcome. My name is Erin, and we are um, in our tropical Pacific Reef right now here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. I want to first off thank all of you for joining us today to our Aquarium Online Academy. Um, this is our Crafty Critters class, so we are going to be learning all about fish that you can see behind me right here. We're going to be taking a deeper dive to learn more about these fish, like this one right here. Look at that. We're also going to get a chance to make our very own fish. Now throughout the program, if you have any uh, questions, if you have any comments, please, please share them right here to 562-286-1838. You can text us live. If you're watching this at another time on another day, you can email us right here. We would also love to see the artwork that you're creating during this class. So if you wanted to send us pictures as we're working, feel free to text them in right here. I have Cynthia here in the studio with me and I know she would love to see the fish that you're building. So we'll go ahead and get started but first you're gonna need some supplies. Like I said we're gonna be making a fish. So a couple of supplies you might need is paper. So get a piece, get some paper. Um, you may also need uh, something to color with. So crayons, markers, colored pencils, whatever you have at home. And then you need something to attach things. So glue or um, tape, something like that. And you need something for cutting. So scissors. So paper, coloring supplies, cutting, and taping or gluing. So go ahead and grab those supplies. I'll give you guys about one minute to find all of those supplies and then we're going to start crafting our very own fish. So again, you're looking for paper, glue stick um, or tape or stapler, whatever it might be, um, coloring supplies, cutting, um, Make sure you grab all those supplies. And while you're waiting, if you already have your supplies ready, this is a live view at our Tropical Pacific exhibit. Take a look. See what it is that you notice about these fish. So we're going to be learning more about fish while we build our very own fish. But I want us to think about things like what colors do you see? What sizes do you see? What shapes do you notice? What body parts do you see? So when you're making your very own fish, you can take some ideas from the fish that you see here, or you can get creative and just add whatever you would like. Um, now, if you are a big fan of crafting, you might even have some other supplies at home, things like um, glitter glue or stickers or stamps or whatever it might be. Feel free to grab whatever you have at home. Um, as long as you have those basic supplies, then we'll be able to build our very own fish right here. So I'll give you guys about another 15 seconds or so, but right now we are making observations. What is it that you notice about these animals. Maybe you're looking at the color. So we're in our tropical reef right now. I chose tropical fish today because tropical fish are usually much more colorful. So you can see, look at this. We've got some blue fish with yellow tails. Here I see some silver fish with yellow tails. Oh, that was a red fish that just swam by. Here's another red fish right here. Oh, look at these ones are black and gray and yellow striped. So we end up seeing lots of bright colors on a tropical reef. Oh, here we go. Look at this great view. We can see pink fish, yellow fish, orange fish. Now, the reason that we see these bright colors is because these are animals that live on a coral reef and corals are very, very colorful. Here you can see lots of bright, colorful corals. We have some pinks and purples and oranges. So these animals choose these bright colors to help them blend in. So if the crayons or the colored pencils that you grabbed are really bright and colorful, then you can work with me to, do, to make a um, colorful tropical fish. Maybe you prefer colors that are a little bit more like gray or black or green or brown, and that's totally okay because there are also fish that are those colors. So if you travel <clears throat> to a kelp forest or somewhere like that, you can see some different colored fish, more like grays and browns. So I want you first to think of what habitat your fish is going to live in. Is your fish going to live in a kelp forest like this? And it's going to be colors like browns and grays and maybe dark greens? Or is your fish gonna live in a coral reef and be bright and colorful? 
my fish is going to be bright and colorful so I've got all of my bright colorful markers ready to go the next thing we need to think about is the shape so fish can be lots of different shapes so we're going to explore a couple of different shapes so that you can choose what shape your fish is going to be now the first fish i want to look at are all of these ones swimming around in here do you notice how most of them are really really skinny that is called being compressed that means they are thin they look like they've been squished from side to side they are really really thin and the reason for that is because they spend so much time swimming in all these cracks and crevices so they've got these really narrow bodies so that they can slip into those cracks and crevices. So we end up seeing a lot of fish that um, need to hide from bigger predators that have this body shape. But that's not the only body shape we can find on a coral reef. Let's take a look at a fish that is a little bit more round. Let's see if we can find a fish that's a little bit more round. Hmm. We're going to see if Cynthia can put one up there for us. <gasps> What type of fish is this? Do you recognize this fish? This is a puffer fish and its body shape helps it in a very special way because what it does is it puffs up really, really big and that helps it to scare off predators. So if a predator is coming up to eat this fish, it puffs up. Can you puff up like a puffer fish? And once it pops up like a puffer fish, then it's able to protect itself. It kind of helps to scare away the predators. So maybe your fish is going to be a little more round like a puffer fish. Let's take a look at a fish that is shaped like a football. So that when it's shaped like a football, it's called fusiform. So fusiform means that it is going to be um, kind of pointy at the front. Oh, wow. Here's a great picture. This is a yellow tail. So this is a football shaped fish. And this, sh this fish is built to be really, really fast. So we see fish like yellowtails and tuna and other fusiform shaped fish that are very, very fast. So if you want your fish to be really fast, maybe it will be fusiform shaped like a football. Now the other shape that we can be is we can be shaped like a rod. So that means that they are long and narrow. They're like long and straight and um, that is shaped like something like a barracuda, like these barracuda. Now these barracuda are also really fast, but they are fast for little short bursts of time. So they go really, really fast and then they stop and then they go really, really fast and then they stop. So that's why the barracuda has this body shape, that long, stiff body shape. I'm gonna look at one more body shape and that is flat. So that is like a flatfish or like a stingray. And that's where their bodies are going to be flat because they live on the seafloor. So that is like an animal, like a halibut or a flounder or any fish that hides on the seafloor. So I want you to think, is your fish going to be um, like a reef fish that is really thin and hides in the cracks and crevices? Is it going to be round like a puffer? Is it going to be football shaped? like a fast fish? Is it going to be long and stiff like a barracuda? Or is it going to be flat like a halibut or a flounder? So think of what body shape your fish is gonna be. We're gonna go ahead and start making our very own fish. I have a piece of paper right here. I'm gonna put this up here so you can see it. I've got just a piece of paper. There we go. So my fish, I decided that I'm going to make a compressed fish, like all those fish that we saw living in the coral reef. And so it's going to be narrow. So I'm just going to kind of draw the body shape for the fish. So it's going to be kind of a little bit taller. Oh, that's hard to see. Let's use some regular pencil instead of my colored pencil. So I'm just gonna draw the body shape for my fish. Now I'm just doing this all by freehand, so we'll see how it, how it turns out. So I'm gonna draw that body shape and I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm just gonna cut out the shape that I drew. So you can be working on your craft right alongside me. We're just gonna cut it out. This is the body shape for the fish that I chose. Now you notice that my fish doesn't have anything on it besides the shape. So we'll add all those other body parts later, but right now we've just figured out the shape. 
So fish can be lots of different shapes, so there's no wrong answer here. Maybe you decided to make a football-shaped fish. Maybe you decided to make a flat fish. Maybe you even are making a puffer fish. Whatever shape you choose, just pick out your shape. You're going to draw it so you know where to cut, and then you're going to cut it out. Now, while you're working on cutting, I want to take a look at the next item that we're going to be adding to our fish. We're going to be exploring the fins. That's a little bit tough to see. Let me grab a different fish. <laughs> we're going to be exploring the fins. So this I have here, this is a clown fish so that you can see. And I know it looks kind of cartoon like, but I want to talk about the fins that you see. So the very first fin I want to talk about, oh wow, here's another, this is a real clown fish. The very first fin I want to talk about is this one here. This is called the caudal fin. It's just their tail, right? And we end up seeing that fish can have a lot of different types of tails or caudal fins. So some of them have a paddle like this, and that means they just kind of cruise along through the water. I wonder if we can go back to that picture of the, the yellow tail, because the yellow tail has a really interesting shape. So look at how this fish's caudal fin or tail is shaped. And look at how this yellow tail, how their tail is shaped. What do you notice? How are their tails different? Do you notice how this one has this V-shaped tail? So really, really fast moving fish will have a V-shaped tail or a forked tail. And so that helps them to move really fast. Other fish that are slower have this kind of more like a paddle-shaped tail. So these are different options for tails for your fish. So I want you to think, is my fish a fast moving fish with a forked tail? Or is my fish a slow moving fish with a paddle shaped tail? I think my fish is going to be a slow moving fish with a paddle shaped tail. So I'm going to cut out a paddle shaped tail for my fish. And you know what? My fish lives in a coral reef. So I think I'm going to get a fun color. So let's see what colors I have for my paddle shaped tail. All right. So. I'm going to go with green. Does green sound good? Look at how bright that green is. So I'm just going to draw again what I want my tail to look like. It's going to be a nice big paddle. There we go. And then I'm just going to cut it out just like I did with the fish shape. I hope you're able to follow along and that your fish is coming along well. And I hope that your fish looks different than mine because fish can be so many different shapes and colors and sizes. It's one of the things that makes fish so special. So I hope that at the end of this program, we have some fish with forked tails and some fish with paddle tails. We uh, hopefully have a lot of different types of tails. Now I'm gonna grab my glue stick here. I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue on there. There we go. And I'm just going to attach it right here. It's that nice green paddle shaped tail. There we go. And you know what? I'm going to add some, uh, a little bit of like color to it. Cause I know that sometimes they, they have some color on their tail. So there's my fish so far. How's your fish doing? Go ahead and send us a picture. If you want to share what your fish looks like, text us here, right here, 562-286-1838. I'd love to see how your fish is looking so far. Now let's go back to the fins because we're missing quite a few fins. So the next fins that we want to talk about are these ones on the top. These are called dorsal fins, dorsal fins. Can you say that? Dorsal fins, and those are the ones on their back. Now, some fish have really large dorsal fins. Some fish have really short dorsal fins, so you can make it as big or as small as you would like. You know what is really cool, though? Some fish even have the ability to move their dorsal fin up and down and up and down. It's kind of like a sail on a sailboat, so that's really cool. So some of them are kind of curved like this. Other ones are straight. Some of them are kind of big and tall. It really just depends on the fish. So pick a shape for your dorsal fin and we will draw it and cut it out all together. So here's my fish. I'm just going to use the bottom right here. I'm just going to make a nice, long, smooth dorsal fin. And I'm going to cut it out. We're just going to go cut, 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 cut. There we go. Okay, and then I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on there, 
just like we did with the other one. Perfect. So I've attached my fins and I noticed that I actually cut my fins a little bit too long. That's okay. I'm just going to uh, kind of trim it up a little bit. There we go. All right. There we go. All right, and then maybe I'll just add a little bit of decoration to my fin as well. There we go. So that's our top fin. The next fin that we're going to be exploring are these fins on the, actually we'll do the bottom ones because the bottom ones usually look pretty similar to the fins on the top. That's just the tag, maybe if we flip it around. There we go. So these ones often look really similar. So again, we can just make a, a small little fin on the bottom um, to attach. So if you are still working on your dorsal fin, that's okay. We're just gonna make another small little fin on the bottom. There we go. And I'm gonna make mine the same shape, just cause that's how I wanna make mine. But maybe your fish has a different shaped fin on the bottom. There we go. And a little bit of glue. There we go. And I'll just add a, some little decoration to the fin. Because I know that fish have some really, really cool patterns. We'll talk a little bit more about those patterns later. This fish is really coming together, isn't it? So we've got the tail fin or the caudal fin. We have the dorsal fin on the top. And we have that anal or pelvic fin on the bottom as well. So the last fin that we're going to add, it's this one. These ones are the pectoral fins or the side fins. Can you swim like a fish and move your pectoral fins? Very good. So we're going to add some pectoral fins and we're going to see if we can make them stick out on the side. It might be a little bit tricky, so follow along. But we're going to see if we can make the pectoral fins stick out on the side, okay? So what I'm going to do is, again, with my green paper, so I'm going to have all the fins be green. We'll add some other colors later. But I'm going to just draw a little fin on the side. That's going to be my pectoral fin. So I'm going to cut it out. There we go. And then if you have scissors or, uh, or if you have that glue or tape or a stapler, then you can use that to attach it, just like we've been doing so far. But what I'm going to do, watch how I do this, I'm just going to fold a little bit on the end. I'm just going to do a little fold so it has a crease, and then I'm going to put glue on the part with the crease. So watch how I'm going to do this. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue right there on the side. There we go. And I'm just going to attach it by that crease. There we go. Now that's going to take a little bit of time to dry. So you just want to be really careful with that because that might take some time to dry. And I realized I wanted to add a little bit of decoration to it. So I'm going to be really gentle. And I'm just going to add. There we go. It's starting to look like a fish, isn't it? So we've explored some more adaptations of our fish. We've looked at the fins. But what are some other adaptations that you notice? If you have any other ideas of other body parts, we'll put that number back up here so you can text us. You can also text us pictures of your artwork if you want to um, show Cynthia and I how you're doing so far. Just send us a text right here. I want to talk about a really important adaptation that fish have, and that's their ability to breathe. Can you take a big deep breath? Very good. One more big deep breath. Very good. So that we breathe using our lungs. That's that body part that we have inside of our body that helps us to breathe. But fish breathe using gills. So what they do is the water goes in through their mouth and then it passes out over their gills. And right here you can see the gill opening. So inside this gill opening, inside that are all these little things that kind of look like feathers and they're inside. And on those feathers, that's where the fish is 
is able to pull all the oxygen out of the water. So they pull that oxygen out of the water and that's how they're able to breathe. Now on the outside, we don't see those feathers. All we see is just this like this gill opening. So we're going to draw a gill opening on our fish. So I'm going to use uh, black because that's what I have here. Um, but you can do whatever color you'd like. And I'm just going to draw a little gill opening right there. And that's where the water will come out. So remember the water goes in through their mouth and then it goes out over their gills and out through that gill opening. Very good. Another adaptation that fish have is they have the scales on their body. What's the purpose of scales? How do scales help them to survive? What are scales even? So scales are these tiny little things that cover their body. You can kind of see them here on this fish, but they are these tiny thing that covers their body and they're kind of hard. They feel almost like a little tiny piece of plastic. And the purpose of that is that it helps to protect them. So it's kind of like this like suit of armor basically. So it protects their body so that they're able to um, like keep their skin safe basically. So we see the birds have feathers, mammals have hair or fur fish have scales. So we're going to draw some scales. I'm going to use what color? Let's see. Maybe I'll do orange for my scales. And I'm just going to kind of draw some little round scales. We can't see that. Uh-oh. Let's see. Okay. I'm going to use marker then because I think colored pencil does not show up very well. Does that show up any better? There we go. Okay, so I'm going to use my orange marker and I'm just going to draw all these little, they kind of look like little um, circles or half circles kind of. So we're just going to draw all these scales and those scales help to protect the fish. Now this might take a while to draw all the scales on your fish. So if you only want to draw them on part of the body, that's okay. There we go. Or you can even kind of go like that. That might be an easier way to draw the scales. You can draw kind of like one big, there we go. So they've got these scales all over their body. Now what, maybe while you're drawing the scales, maybe you want to take this opportunity to give your fish some fun patterns too. We end up seeing that some fish are striped. We see that some fish are dotted. Maybe some fish have like zigzag marks on them. So I'm going to make my fish kind of different colors here while I'm coloring it in. What other colors should I use? My fish lives in a tropical coral reef, so it's really, really colorful. So I'm seeing some oranges, some blues, a little bit of red. Maybe I'll do a little more. Oh, should I add some green? I know we have some green on the fins already. Here's like a greenish blue color kind of. There we go. Now I'm getting close to the face and I want to make sure I have a chance to draw the mouth. So while you're decorating your fish, if you wanted to add things like an eye or a mouth, this might be a good time to do it. So I'm going to draw a nice big eye right here. There we go. And then my fish also is going to have a little fishy mouth. So maybe I'll just draw, we'll just draw a little fishy mouth. There we go. Okay, and then I'm gonna finish the scales because I need a little bit more with the scales. I don't think yellow is gonna show up. We'll try, oh, here's pink. Should we add some pink? Nope. We'll add some orange. We'll, we'll do some more orange, finish up with orange. There we go. All right, I think that that's about good for my fish scales. How's your fish looking? Does your fish live in tropical waters like mine and it's really colorful? Maybe it lives in colder waters and it's more uh, grayish or brownish. Very cool. All right, so then the last thing that I wanna look at, we've added, you see that I added some patterns here. I wanna take a look at some of the patterns that different types of fish have while you're finishing decorating your fish. Maybe this will give you some inspiration. The first one I wanna look at is, remember earlier we were looking at that butterfly fish. Let's go back to that butterfly fish because the butterfly fish has a really unique characteristic. So it has stripes. We've seen some other fish with stripes, but this fish, what do you see here? 
This is called a fake eye or a false eye, and this helps them to confuse their predators. So what they do with this fake eye, basically if a predator sees this fish, they might not see this eye, instead they might see this eye. And look at how big that eye is. So by having such a big eye, the predator is going to think that must be a very big fish. So maybe the predator won't try to feed on this butterfly fish. The other thing that this fake eye does is that if the eye is on this side of the body, then the fish is going to swim this way. But we can see that the head is actually over here. So this fish is actually going to swim that way. So this is kind of their way of confusing their predators. I think my fish needs a fake eye also so it can confuse its predators. So I'm going to add a really, really big fake eye. I'm going to add it right back here and it's going to be black. So we're going to add a really, really big fake eye. Maybe your fish has a fake eye. Maybe your fish doesn't have any predators so it doesn't need a fake eye. But mine has a fake eye right there. Now the other fish, I want to look at, take a look at one more fish so we can explore one more type of pattern uh, before we finish up here. And that is a clownfish. We were looking at clownfish a little bit earlier, but I want to take a closer look. So this is a clownfish. You've probably seen this fish before, and you notice that it has these stripes. Now these stripes actually help it to camouflage because a clownfish lives in a sea anemone. Can you make your hands like a sea anemone? Sea anemones have all these tentacles, and those tentacles um, are where they basically catch their food. And so fish that live inside of sea anemones, like this clownfish or that anemone fish we just saw, they have stripes to blend in with the tentacles of that sea anemone. So maybe your fish has stripes to help it blend in. Well, students, I have had so much fun learning with all of you today. Um, we're going to put up that number and that email address one more time. Maybe you're still working on your fish. So if you finish up your fish, we would love to see a picture of it, either sent to this text or sent to this email down here. I would love to see all of your hard work. I know you've been really, really crafty. Now, if you've enjoyed learning about fish and making your own fish right now, um, at 10 a.m., we're going to be back to take another deeper dive into fish. Um, learning even more about those adaptations. So if you wanted to join us at 10 a.m., we would love to see you then. So thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day. Goodbye.